Food industries and food sources coming under increasing scrutiny as we move towards net zero. Recent research has put the spotlight on the dairy industry. Dora Marinova, a professor at the Curtin University Sustainability Policy Institute, joins us now. Professor, welcome. Now, your research has revealed some amazing insights. What sort of impact on global land use can we have by choosing the type of milk that we drink? Well, thanks for having me. Um, but milk is something that we are so used to and we have taken it for granted for a long time. But when you compare plant-based milks, which have become extremely popular recently, with dairy-based milks, we can see a huge difference. Um, it doesn't matter whether you look at water consumption, whether you look at land use or greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, in all aspects, plant-based milks are a much better option than dairy milks, cow's milk, which is uh, something that probably all of us have been uh, growing up with. Uh, having said that, this is not exactly correct because countries such as China, they have not been used to consuming dairy products as much as other parts of the, of the world. Uh, and across the Asian population, we see a lot of uh, intolerance for dairy products. And traditionally, uh, these countries have been using plant-based milks for millennia. Mm. So, but for Western consumers and consumers in uh, countries such as Australia, uh, the shift to plant-based milks is a relatively new phenomenon. Uh, and it's something that we are doing because of environmental concerns. And it's also because it's better for our health. Mm. So, so what are the advantages? I mean, you can break the different types of milks, of course, into different categories. What are the advantages of nut-based milks? The advantages of nut-based milks is that they uh, require much less land. Uh, also, uh, they the trees store carbon. So if we are talking about net, net zero, that's a, an additional benefit that we are getting by growing trees. Uh, and, and they're very tasty. Uh, uh, they, there is something that uh, we should be moving uh, towards uh, consuming more. Uh, obviously, not all plant-based milks and not all nut-based uh, milks are the, are the same. And it also depends in which areas they are being grown. Um, for example, uh, macadamia nuts uh, are quite expensive to be used uh, for uh, making milk. Uh, but we can have almond, particularly grown in Australia. We can have hazelnut milks. So there are different varieties that we, that we can use. And my message has always been is not to stick to one particular type of plant-based milk, but to try different uh, plant-based milks. It's not all equal, though, is it? I mean, it's certainly not a, le um, a level playing field. When you look at um, almond production you were talking about here in Australia, it's slightly different over in the US where there's environmental concerns when it comes to bees and pollination there. The main reason uh, for environmental concerns is if we are using uh, pesticides, um, that they affect bees. Uh, however, we also have other natural events, particularly with climate change, more fires, more smoke, drought, that also can affect uh, the bee population. And the bees are essential for pollinating the, the almond trees. We don't have any particular problems at the moment with bees in Australia, uh, apart from, you know, some recent cases that we've been hearing on, on, on the news with the virus that has come uh, in isolated parts of Australia. But generally, we don't have problems with the bee population. So let's throw coconut milk into the conversation here, Professor, because, of course, coconuts uh, and growing coconuts, they use a lot less water. That's true. Um, the, the problem with coconut trees is that uh, 
the, the growing of coconut trees has been associated with clearing of, of rainforests. Uh, and uh, that's my main concern that if we shift only to one type of um, uh, plant-based milk, that would mean in the, uh, large-scale industrialization, which will impact on native habitats, on native vegetation. So the more we diversify, the, be the better. Mm. Uh, and then into the conversation comes soy milk, um, comes hemp milk, there are rice milks and oat milks. How do you determine which of these is better on a, gl on a global scale? Uh, I would love, I actually... Myself, I actually like soy milk quite a lot because uh, by using soy-based milk, you are actually contributing to nitrogen fixation. Uh, being a legume, the soy plant, if you do the right crop rotation, helps uh, with soil fertility. The problem with soy, however, has been that the majority of the soybeans are used as animal feed rather than directly for human consumption, including in the, in the form of milks. So that big demand for soy as feed for animal production, uh, particularly in countries such as China, has um, caused a lot of um, the use of gen genetically modified uh, soy varieties, as well as clearing of land, vast areas of uh, rainforest in the Amazon, also the savannas, to grow soy for feed rather than for direct human consumption. Um, soy is a, is a wonderful uh, plant. It's, it's a magic plant that has all the amino acids that we need, the essential uh, uh, amino acids that we need um, for our nutrition. And it's something that I would say is, is, a, is a good, is a very good crop. However, it has been overexploited as feed for animals. Mm, mm. Now, Professor, obviously your message is that, you know, uh, spread your risk or spread the risk and, and try all, all different types of, of plant-based milks. But it's not only the milk themselves and how it's produced and the water and the carbon emissions and so forth. It's also the packaging. And that can have a significant impact on the environmental imprint or impact of the milk that we drink. This is so true. The packaging can contribute up to 50% of the greenhouse gas emissions associated with the milk. Uh, the packaging needs to be recyclable. It needs to be disposed properly rather than uh, continuing with landfill. However, the same problem we are seeing with dairy milk. But if you want to to do the change because of environmental concerns, you need to opt for recyclable packaging. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor, it's been a real pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge and sharing your research with us here on the APAC Network. Thanks a lot. Professor Dora Marinova with us there.